and some observations of of uh, gravitational wave counterparts and gamma rays, and then some future work, um, things that we're working on now um, to prepare for um, O3. Okay, so Integral is uh, an ESA M2 mission um, that was launched in 2002, and it covers energies from 3 keV up to 10 MeV and it consists of three instruments. Um, it's uh, got all sky monitoring capability above 80 keV and has a, a very elliptical orbit, which gives us about um, 2.7 days of continuous observations. And then there's just about a six hour perigee. Um, <clears throat> and so, Um, so for our integral observations, we have actually have observed five out of the six black hole black hole mergers, <clears throat> and then the one that we missed was during a perigee passage, and then we obviously saw the the neutron star binary merger in August. So, um, <clears throat> as you're probably familiar with, the with only two <clears throat> interferometers, there's quite a large error region on the sky, which makes things very difficult for electromagnetic follow-ups. Um, and so, um, you can see the green squares and circles are attempts to try and find the counterparts for a gravitational wave event 150904. Um, and so if we can reduce the, <clears throat> the size of the error region, that makes things significantly easier on trying to find the EM counterpart. Um, so for 1708-17A with three interferometers, we um, were able to reduce the error region um, with just the gravitational waves to the circle. Um, and if we look at actually the reported detections um, for the prompt emission, um, Fermi GBM was actually first with about 16 seconds after the event. They um, reported their GRB, and then 27 minutes after the detection, LIGO Virgo reported their um, gravitational wave detection, and then with integral above 100 keV, about an hour later, we reported um, a detection of a GRB coincident with, <clears throat> with the Fermi GBM. And so, um, as I said a moment ago, with the air region from LIGO Virgo, <clears throat> significantly smaller to a circle, and combined with the air region from Fermi GBM and integral, this band, um, the air region was then reduced to this small green ellipse. Um, and then you can see the orange circle inside where the <clears throat> optical counterpart was found. So for our integral pointed follow-up, um, so this first two points are from the burst uh, from the prompt emission, and then for about 20,000 seconds following that, the instrument stayed in the same aspect, um, and <clears throat> with, ah, so here we had our all-sky monitoring instruments available. And so with the SPACS above 100 keV, and then PIXIT, which is 300 keV to 2.5 MeV, and then the VITO, we're able to monitor, at least for any <coughs> um, significant flux, and found only upper limits. 
And then after 20,000 seconds, we then pointed to <clears throat> some pointed follow-up for SPI, the, <clears throat> the spectral um, the spectrometer, and then IBIS, and then GEMX, um, which is soft X-rays, and then the optical monitoring. And so you can see here, um, even for the five-day observations that we had <clears throat> um, in the follow-up, still upper limits, and we were able to, with PIXIT, look for a broad um, spectral line at the 511 keV and didn't find anything and then as well with with SPI for a narrow line um, and only obtained upper limits ah. <clears throat> so because we are with um, an optical counterpart and from the gravitational wave um, analysis we have a, a distance to the the GRB which is <clears throat> unusual, especially for short GRBs, we're able to um, calculate the isotropic energy. And so here's a plot then of the long GRBs with a, a distance, and then in the orange is the short GRBs with a, a red shift. And so you can see down here this purple star is 1708, 17A. And so it's actually the closest GRB observed by a factor of about 100. Um, but then it, the energetics is, is extremely low, a factor of between two and, uh, or order of magnitude between two and six um, compared to anything else. And so um, despite being extreme, the, such a large energetics difference um, for the fact that it's supposed to be just two neutron stars colliding is difficult to explain if you're looking down the jet. And so <clears throat> really the three possible rough models for the, the GRB is this uniform top hat model um, <clears throat> where the emission is almost straight down the, the jet. And so that's very difficult to explain than this low energetics. And so that favors then either this structured jet model or a uniform jet plus a, co a cocoon um, with the observing angle for this event um, fairly far off axis. Uh, and that's, that's consistent with the 20 to 60 degrees from the, the LIGO Virgo um, <coughs> results. And so if we <clears throat> look at some other wavelengths, um, you can see in the timeline, here's the gravitational wave detection, then the gamma ray detection in the first tens, uh, few seconds, and then, um, let's see, about less than a day later is the optical detection, and then the, near, then the infrared, and then the UV. And so not until about 10 days later with their x-ray and radio detections. Um, so if we put together the results from um, across the electromagnetic spectrum, um, if we look, you have the observer on edge at 90 degrees, you'll have, uh, <clears throat> you'll see the right after the neutron star merger, have a neutron rich ejecta that's isotropic, that peaks in the infrared. And looking uh, down the polar axis for the, <clears throat> for the kilonova, uh, the emission will peak in the optical. And for the collimated jet, <clears throat> if you're looking down the jet, um, you'll have synchrotron emission at x-ray, radio, and optical wavelengths. And typically, for the most GRBs seen, <clears throat> this emission will, will outshine all the other components. And so um, the other components then won't be observed. But if the observer's off axis, then the low luminosity components will be observed um, <clears throat> um, uh, at a delay of weeks to days, days to weeks. 
the current work that we're doing then with Integral is, is working on a common search for sub-threshold events and <clears throat> um, that we can then feed into or that we can then report to LIGO Virgos for them to look for possible sub-threshold gravitational wave events. So we've started <clears throat> um, predominantly by looking at soft x-rays above 300 keV, 200 keV with, with Pixit to look for previously reported GRBs um, with a focus on short ones, <clears throat> as well as develop some spectral analysis in the soft gamma rays um, that we can then extend the GBM spectra that go from about 10 keV up to a few hundred keV. And with Pixit, we can go up to um, two and a half MeV. Um, and then we're also looking for some faint GRBs that are below trigger threshold mm, so that they're not, have not been reported before. Uh, Fermi GBM has started some analysis with looking for sub-threshold events, and they report about 80 sub-threshold events per year. And that's not including the roughly 40 onboard triggers they see a year. So here are a couple of examples of <clears throat> short GRBs that we found that were untriggered events that GBM has, has reported. And so we have one here. Um, with the t equals zero for the reported GRB time from GBM. And so here's the Pixit light curve in below 500 keV and then above 500 keV here. And then here's the ACS light curve, which is above about 100 keV. And then here we have a second event here <clears throat> with Pixit and then another one with this BACS. So more current work that we're also doing is, trying, is developing some real-time analysis um, as the telemetry from the instrument is, is, near real, is almost real-time. And so we would like to then be able to do our search in essentially real-time and then be able to report bursts um, for immediate detection and then some web alerts. And additionally, we're modifying the onboard software so that for Pixit we can get data in photon by photon mode um, to have better spectral resolution for our events. Because currently during repointings of the instrument SLUs, we don't get any Pixit data. And so opportunities missed for data that we can, we can use. Because um, currently during pointing observations, we just have eight broad energy channels with 16 millisecond resolution. So, uh, so thank you for your attention. Thank you, James. A uh, question for, for him. Well, Giovanni, of course. Uh, about uh, the, the instruments on board, you, you have uh, many, uh, some of them are covering the entire sky, you said. Uh, um, but uh, uh, how many of them can point? I mean, uh, uh, I mean the, the position information was extracted from the timing information of arrival between the integral and, and Fermi, correct? Correct. correct. But, but you have also... Uh, so pointing instruments inside the integral? I mean. Yes, so there are three pointed instruments um, and then the, the all sky monitor above 100 keV it doesn't have any pointing information. And so the field of view for the pointing instruments is a, three of them is about 30 degrees. And so they're, they're wide field of view. Mm, Relatively. Okay, other questions? If not, we thank you, James, again.